Good morning. Good morning. I'm, great. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. I'm Jonathan Rondo. I'm the new president and CEO of the Family League of Baltimore City, and I'm delighted to be here to kick off Baltimore City's Super Summer. Summer is coming up fast, and we're getting ready to enjoy warmer months and summer activities. We also want to prepare for learning, meals, and fun. Even though the summer is a carefree time, we don't want to lose the important gains that our students have made during the summer. Kids can lose months of learning over the summer, leaving them behind when school starts in the fall. We also want to make sure that students have access to healthy meals and that they, that they get during the school year to power them through an active summer. And that's why we have Baltimore City Super Summer, to ensure that young people have access to meals, reading, and other fun activities during the summer. Baltimore City Super Summer is led this year by the Baltimore Partnership to End Childhood Hunger, a consortium of government, academic, and nonprofit partners, including the Office of the Mayor, the Family League of Baltimore City, Baltimore Housing, Maryland State Department of Education, Baltimore City Public Schools, Parks and People, Baltimore City Department of Recreation and Parks, Share Our Strengths, and Maryland Hunger Solutions. I want to personally thank staff and leadership of each of these organizations for their commitment to keeping our children learning, reading, active, and eating healthy over the summer months. I would like to now introduce Bob Wall, Acting Chief of the Department of Recreation and Parks, whose agency runs more than 30 fun camps here in the city of Baltimore where kids can learn, be active, and get healthy meals. Bob. Good morning, folks. Morning. Young man with the bow tie. Let me stand up and see that bow tie. What courage it took to wear that bow tie. That is awesome. Awesome. Okay. On behalf of Baltimore City uh, Department of Recreation and Parks team and Mr. Burkeen, our director, uh, we welcome you to the Johnny Edgar Howard Recreation Center. As a product of uh, Baltimore City, hanging out in the park recreation centers at Bocek, Elwood, and Patterson. It gives me great privilege to be here today to kick off Recreation in Parks 2013 spring summer season with the Super Summer Food Service Program. Most importantly today is about celebrating and encouraging active healthy lifestyles for the citizens of Baltimore. We're trying to teach our kids to um, have healthy diets as well as being active and we're never as adults ever uh, too young to learn how to uh, um, duplicate what we're trying to teach the kids. Uh, since 2011 I've lost about 80 pounds. Um, it's, it's, been a, it's been a interesting last six months being my dad, my 84 year, 84 year old dad has been living with me and he's kind of acting like a 16 year old teenager so but hey we're working on trying to get to the extra 20 so but anyway, adults, get on board with the kids. You're welcome aboard. Encourage you guys to do the same thing. And, and what a better place to host this event than John Eggerhauer Recreation Center, where the director, Carolyn Newton, affectionately known as Miss Cookie, <laughs> exudes the energy and excitement where programs like this need to be held. Uh, along with her staff of Sherwin Page, Cassandra, Joe, and Janet Wright, they offer a variety of creative and innovative programming options, such as the Healthy Sense Parents Cooking Class, the First Friday's Parents Breakfast Workshop. Both of these programs offer tips and techniques on how to budget, make healthy food choices, and parenting skills. And we are very proud of our Recreation Center directors, leaders, staff, and volunteers who are on the front lines every day caring for and providing nurturing environments for our children. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our partner, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, the Lakeside Civic Association, the Upton Planning Committee, Reservoir Hill Improvement Council, 
Baltimore City's Department of Housing, the Family League of Baltimore City, the Parks and People Foundation, Share Our Strength, the Park Heights Renaissance Association, and Baltimore City Public Schools. Thank you for your continuous support of Baltimore City Department of Recreation and Parks. Without you guys, we couldn't do what we're trying to do with our children and adults. Because of the Super Summer Program, we will be able to ensure that over 1,000 youth receive the nutritious meals daily, breakfast, lunch, and supper during the summer season. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming out. Look forward to a great super summer season. Thank you, Bob. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce our mayor, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, who launched Baltimore City's Super Summer last year. By bringing together public agencies and private partners, she's helped to ensure that all Baltimore City youth have truly a super summer. Mayor Rawlings-Blake. Good morning, everyone. That's so wonderful. Thank you. And Jonathan, thanks for the, the kind introduction and for the students. Thank you for your patience and thank you uh, for your attention this morning. And to the dapper young gentleman in the bow tie. Uh, women do notice a man that has good fashion sense, so you, you do stand up. You'll need that information years from now. I'm just, you know, tuck it away. And, so anyway, it is good to be here this morning as we get ready for another super summer in Baltimore City. I would like to thank and acknowledge uh, Councilman Mosby, who I think is here on double duty. <laughs> Councilman Scott, thank you very much for being here. As far as we know, he's not here on double duty. <laughs> I want to thank Deputy Commissioner uh, Reggie Scriber as well as uh, uh, Commissioner Graziano both for being here. I want to thank John Rondo. I think this is our first event in your new capacity as CEO of the Family League. Uh, thank you very much for coming on board and I'm really looking forward to this initiative and, and many more in the future. And I want to thank the Food Nutrition Services of the Baltimore City uh, Public Schools uh, for all of your hard work and for your commitment to providing safe places for our young people and the whole system, the school system, for providing safe places for our kids to learn, to play, to grow uh, when school is out. And I'd also like to thank Ms. Cookie. I know you're in the back over there. Uh, thank you for hosting us today and, and just for, for being uh, someone who we, the city can depend on and uh, who the, the, your neighbors uh, for this center can depend on. Uh, you, you definitely bring your personal touch to the Summer Meals Program and it does not go unnoticed. And last but not least, I want to uh, recognize Lewis Johnson. That's you, Mr. Johnson. He is here to educate your pe his peers on the importance of summer learning, meals, and activities. You turned 11 and you've been coming to the camp for seven years? Wonderful, then you can give a good testimony. He's gonna share his perspective on what summer, the super summer experience is like for young people like him. And while summer offers a break for school, for young people, it also is a time when too many of our young people are at risk of hunger. In 2012, only 50% of the kids who got free lunch also got a summer meal. And that's a gap of almost 23 thousand young people and I'm, I'm glad to see uh, some of our uh, community partners uh, with us today who recognize that it is up to all of us to stand in the gap uh, when that happens. Our children need meals to power through a great summer of learning and all the sun that they're going to have during the warm months and in the city in which 84 percent of our young people are eligible for free and reduced price meals. We know that many of the 23,000 uh, young people rely on school meals and it, again it's our job to, to close that gap. Last year over a million breakfasts, lunches and some suppers were served to Baltimore City youth between June and August and I, I, I attest and it, I've said this on many occasions, God bless the, the breakfast program because um, you know the times we come up short and my daughter's like don't worry about it mommy I'm going to school to have breakfast. I'm like thank you and she enjoys it. She loves, she loves the breakfast. 
um, program. And when we're running late, it's per, you know it, it, it is a, um, a lifesaver for us. Um, and that happens between June and August in the school year. And this year, we are aiming to double the number of meals served during the summer program. The majority of summer meals, 97% uh, of the summer meals are provided by just three agencies, housing, Baltimore City Public Schools, and the Family League. And those agencies are members of the Baltimore Partnership to End Childhood Hunger, a group of government, not-for-profit, and academic partners that are working to increase summer meal participation and to help create positive opportunities for our young people throughout the year. The Baltimore Partnership is possible because of our members, the Department of Recreation and Parks, Housing, City Public Schools, the Family League, Maryland Hunger Solutions, Share Our Strength, the Parks and People Foundation, and many, many more who work to make this partnership, uh, to, make, to, to form the partnership, but also to make the partnership work for our young people. By forming this partnership, we're able to do more together than any of us could do alone. Uh, now the spring break is over, thank God, and parents are planning for the summer. The Baltimore Partnership is working with community associations in nine target neighborhoods to spread the message about summer meals, um, summer activities and summer meals. We had a great program last year where we went and knocked on doors. We did all kinds of things to bring awareness, and I hope we're going to do the same thing uh, this summer to, to leave no stone unturned in our effort to make sure that people know about the resources that are out there. And that's why uh, having us here is so important because, you know, kids do a better job than I think we can ever do of spreading the word uh, among their peers about what's available. Analysis of neighborhood indicators show us that we need to reach out to families in Brooklyn, Cherry Hill, Central Park Heights, Sandtown, Winchester, Upton, Broadway East, Edinburgh Gardens, Lakeside, uh, uh, Chum, and right here in Reservoir Hill, and increasing awareness our summer meals can help us reach more than 15,000 kids who live in those neighborhoods. Parents and community members can help us too by spreading the word. Um, just call 211 or visit um, MarylandMDSummerMeals.msde.state.ms.us. I know that's a mouthful to connect, so just dial 211. Uh, to connect to free meals, learning opportunities, reading and recreation activities uh, for their neighborhood and for beyond, and working together with these partners across our city who are committed to making sure that kids have enough to uh, eat this summer. We can meet the most basic needs of our young people, ensure that all of Baltimore City's kids have a super summer. The work we do to ensure that young people have access to meals and enrichment in the summer will go a long way in educate, improving educational achievement for our young people for years to come. In addition to developing partnerships to leverage resources better, we're continuing to prioritize funding for education in the city budget. The budget that we released uh, two weeks ago provides nearly $40 million for the Mayor's Better Schools Initiative to modernize city school buildings. Again, thank you to the legislature. And so I was so excited last night, I want to run around in circles. Um, we are, we are, you know, it's an incredible, and, and we're an incredible time in Baltimore City with what we are uh, on the verge of when it comes to what we're able to do for our kids. We're doubling the, city's, the city government's contribution to school construction and renovation on historic levels. The funding combined with the state resources uh, recently approved by the General Assembly will support over a billion dollars in infrastructure investment in our school buildings. It begins to transition uh, the, the, the transition, excuse me, of four city daycare centers to year-round Head Start centers that will help 2,000 young people prepare for kindergarten and combat summer learning loss. It replaces earmarked grants in the education grant service with $500,000 that will be administered by the Family League of Baltimore for evidence-based programming to improve education outcomes. Our budget adds $5 million in capital funding to upgrade recreation centers and buildings throughout our city and includes $1.2 million to continue to operate eight after-school after centers and $300,000, sorry, $300,000, I don't want to make you have a heart attack over here, $300,000 <laughs> for equipment at those uh, centers that will open in fiscal 2014. Our effort to grow Baltimore by 10,000 families over the next 10 years depends greatly on our success in all of these areas. And with the new school, um, state school construction partnership and through these efforts, 
such as Baltimore's uh, Super Summer, we're making our communities more attractive to current residents as well as catching the eye of potential new residents. Thank you again, all of our partners, and a special thank you again to the students who have been so attentive and patient. Uh, thank you for everyone's commitment to uh, Baltimore's young people. I hope everyone has a great day, a great um, continuous, I hope you continue to have a great school year, and I hope that you have in advance a great summer. Thank you again. Thank you, Mayor, for your leadership and vision for improving services and creating opportunities for our city's young people over the summer months. I would now like to take a few moments to talk about the Family League's exciting plan for summer meals. As the Mayor mentioned, we are seeking to double the number of meals we serve this summer to two million meals. That's right, two million. Right now, we're recruiting a hundred, that's right, give a round of applause, that's a huge accomplishment. Right now, we're recruiting 100 additional meal sites for a total of 600 sites so that every kid has access for meals over the summer. This year, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> this year, we're using data collected over several years to identify the areas of greatest unmet need and strategize how to best serve those communities. The mayor mentioned several neighborhoods where we are focusing our efforts in addition, in addition to providing meals throughout the city. In those neighborhoods, the Family League, along with our partners, Mayor, um, Maryland Hunger Solutions, Baltimore Housing, Share Our Strength, and Baltimore Food Policy Initiative, are working with community organizations to enlist local advocates for the Summer Meals Program. While we can do public education and mailings and bus ads, we also know people listen to family, friends, neighbors, and their peers. To get our message out for Summer Meals, leaders need to be speaking out in their own communities. We have had tremendous response from activists in the targeted communities with leaders excited and committed to doing outreach, canvassing, and education about their availability and importance of summer meals and other activities. I would like to acknowledge several of those community activists who are here today. Corinthia Barber, president of the Edner Garden Civic Association. <laughs> Julia Cologne, president and CEO of the Park Heights Renaissance. Yeah. Wanda Best, Executive Director of the Upton Planning Committee. Yeah. And Richard Gwen, uh, Gwen Allen, Director of the Reservoir Hill Improvement Council. Thank you all for your commitment to our young people. As we look forward to reaching that two million meal mark, um, it, it's really important that we keep those partnerships together. I'd like to now introduce another important partner in our summer work, Reggie Scriber, Deputy Commissioner of Community Services for Baltimore Housing. Thank you so much, Jonathan, and on to the mayor. Uh, I would be remiss if I wouldn't uh, take the pleasure to introduce my leader, Commissioner Paul Graziano. Uh, you know, this all works with Paul giving me the the emphasis to move forward to make Baltimore a better place for our young people. For those who have never experienced being hungry, I can't begin to imagine what that must be like, uh, feel like to a kid or someone who's not had a good meal. And so my emphasis has always been on what I was taught as a young kid. Because I grew up in Baltimore in the 100 block of North Mount Street. One, I was a, the oldest child of eight. And there were many days that my parents, who were low-income family members, could not provide us with the kind of nutritious meal. And so that passion has been with me through my duration of life. As I've turned the corner to become more of a senior citizen in this city, my passion and desire becomes more expressive to the young kids that I run across every day who need to understand what life really is about. It is what we do for our young people that really counts. Our most important product are our young people, and with, this is the future of Baltimore. So let's take a look around and see what we are confronted with in this city every day. Uh, I can't begin to tell you the newest amount of people that enter my office who don't have a place to stay, who don't have a meal to eat, who's in the cold. For those who have not experienced that, God bless you. 
for those who are experiencing that. Those of us, Mayor Rollins Blake said it better, we are doing all we can to enhance and to improve the quality of life for our most important product of our children. Baltimore housing last year, the highest number in the state, did 483 sites for the summer feeding program, 770,000 meals. Our goal this year, uh, Jonathan mentioned two million, our goal is to reach over a million. We are now emphasizing Cherry Hill, Brooklyn, Park Heights, Uplands, and Curtis Bay, and Reservoir Hill as part of our measure. Our outreach people, we know we used to use outreach people for only the summer, now we use our outreach workers for our year round. People said, oh, you can't afford to do that. I, I look at Bruce Schenkel there from the Maryland Department of Education, who's the sponsor for the program in terms of funding. And I usually tell Bruce, we need to be creative. We need to come up with a better plan. Because as been mentioned, no child, no child should go to be at home. No child should have to determine, or parents should have to determine whether there's adequate housing in this city. Too much of that happens here. We got, we're got making progress, but we've got a long ways to go. And with the support of the mayor and her message and how we move forward in this city, it can be done. It can be done. We all need to roll our sleeves up and understand that if we want to, no effort is untarded if we want to make it work. Now, I can tell you that it's not going to be easy. It's always a struggle to improve the quality of life. Pioneers started years ago and made progress. Baltimore City is making progress under the leadership of Mayor Rollins Blake. And we can't lose if we use the right stuff. My father used to always say to me when I was a young boy, and this is a message that always registered, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. That's a true statement. So how do you get to heaven? You do the appropriate things and the right things, because we're all going to die. And so as I leave this message today with our young men and women, uh, I just want you to understand Baltimore Houses is at the forefront, working with our partners, coming up with a plan to make Baltimore a better place for all of our young people to live. And I can tell you this, if there's a will, there's a way. And the will is here, and so the way will be accomplished. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reggie, for your work and partnership. Now I'd like to introduce a very special guest, someone who was mentioned early on, Lewis Johnson, who is a fifth grader. As, as Mayor Rawlings Blake talked about, he's come to camp here for seven years. He also eats breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. And Ms. Cookie has told me that uh, you want to talk to us a little bit about what you do over the summer. So can you talk, talk to us about that? The things, <clears throat> the things I do over the summer is for the summer camp at John E. Howard, we, we go to the gym, read, and arts and crafts, <clears throat> and then we go to the computer lab. And the things we eat is, at breakfast we eat cereal, bagels, Breakfast bars and milk and juice. For lunch, it is oh, sandwiches, fresh fruit, oranges, apples, pears, milk and juice. And for dinner, uh, oh, a hot meal, turkey, gravy with oh, salad and rolls and milk and juice. Thank you, Lewis. As we know, we want even more kids to engage in their summer activities like Lewis has for the last seven years. To find out more uh, about the activities listed here, in case you didn't know, um, you can uh, learn, call 211 or go to 211maryland.org. You can also go to MSDE's website or go to the Family League's website at flbcinc.org for more information about sites or how to get connected with Super Summer. Thank you all for coming out today, and thank you for your work to make this Baltimore City Super Summer the best it's been in uh, creating opportunities for the young people here in Baltimore City. Thank you.